Political parties will be required to disclose all donations received between April and June this year, ahead of the local government elections in August. The Political Party Funding Act comes into effect on the 1st of April. This morning, the IEC gave an update on the implementation of the act. To discuss this more, I'm joined by Sai Mamabulo, who is the IEC's Chief Electoral Officer. Mr. Mamabolo, thank you so much for your time this evening. So the Act is finally coming into law. How ready are you as the IEC to implement? Well, over the past uh, two years, uh, we've taken uh, measures to get ready. We've been working uh, with political parties in the write-up of the regulations, which we published today. We've also put up a, an information technology portal, as it were, that can be used by donating agencies, donating corporates, as well as political parties for purposes of disclosing income above 100,000 rent in one financial year. Mm. So, so when political parties declare donations above 100,000 to you, how do we have access to those records as the public? The law uh, demands of the IC to publish um, after every quarter um, the records that have been disclosed by political parties. Mm. So at least uh, four times a year, mm. members of the public, media and civil society will mm. receive uh, a, a report from the IC indicating the donations that have been disclosed by parties as well as um, the donate. Uh, don uh, agencies that are donating. Mm -hmm. so, so the Act prohibits donations to political parties by foreign governments, agencies, uh, persons or organs of state. What are the consequences if it's found a party received a donation from a foreign government or organ? Because like any other system, this is also prone to manipulation and exploitation. People can find ways to donate money through other channels to hide the source. Certainly, uh, you, are, you are correct that um, the, the law as we have it is not a total uh, panacea to the problems uh, that we set um, party funding uh, in, 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 in our country. Mm. Uh, but the law, this law is the starting point. Uh, at least we're beginning to open the, the transparency envelope, as it were. Um, to force a situation where these donations are declared and so on. Where there are instances of non-compliance, the Commission is able to issue directions in terms of the law to request parties to uh, comply. And if there's repeated non-compliance with the law, the Commission is able to approach the Electoral Court for the imposition of administrative fines. But over and above that, certain of uh, certain non-compliance amounts to criminal offences. So people can be prosecuted by the prosecuting authority, mm -hmm. and where um, courts feel that people must be jailed, they can be jailed to a maximum period of five years. Mm -hmm. so, but, but basically, the implementation will rely heavily on self-regulation and compliance. Um, I think when one looks at the total architecture of the law, mm. um, it contemplates a role for the IEC, certainly, no doubt about it. There's a role for political parties, especially the accounting officers of political parties. There's a role for the electoral court. There's a role for the criminal justice system. But importantly, there is also a role for the audit um, profession, because each party must appoint an auditor. Mm. And that uh, auditor must go through the financial records of a political party on an annual basis yeah. and express an opinion whether, in their view, um, the financial records of the party are in compliance with the law and where they feel that there are transactions which are not compliant with the law, those must be recorded as such and reported in the mm. audit report. And on that basis, the Commission will be able 
um, to take appropriate action, be it of a criminal nature or of a civil nature mm. through the electoral court. Mm. So, so how is this new act going to change how the National Revenue Fund is distributed? <clears throat> well, the, the, there is the represented uh, political parties fund, um, which really is resourced by monies appropriated uh, by, by parliament. And political parties who have representation in the National Assembly as well as provincial uh, legislatures will continue to receive public funding mm. uh, on a quarterly basis um, uh, in, in conjunction, um, in, yeah, based on the level of rep representation they have yeah. in the National Assembly as well as uh, in the provincial legislatures. What changes with the coming of the law is the proportion, the ratios. Mm. It used to be 90% proportionality and 10% equity. Now it's two thirds uh, proportionality and one third um, equity, which means smaller parties will get a, a great, will get a, a, a bigger slice mm. of mm. the annual allocation from national and uh, national treasure. But over and above the represented political parties fund. The Act also creates a multi-party democracy fund, where in the Corporate South Africa uh, foundations, individuals may make contributions. And monies uh, in that fund will also be distributed to all parties uh, that are represented in the National Assembly and in provincial legislatures. So if you don't want to make a direct donation to a party. You can still make a contribution to the multi-party democracy fund and that money will be allocated based on that uh, on those proportions to mm. political parties which have representation in the legislative assemblies. Yeah. H have you been entertaining the calls from particularly the ANC for, for that fund to be increased? The ANC's Treasurer General Paul Mashadile has made calls that th there needs to be an increase in the funding to political parties, especially now that this act is going to limit how much individuals and, and institutions or companies can, can donate to political parties? Look, if we, as a society, we value uh, transparency, we value the need for a regulatory framework such as the political parties, um, uh, political parties Funding Act, then we must accept that the fiscals must come uh, and make a contribution uh, because it, you also don't want to have a political system that is not well resourced. So uh, this will come at the cost and the fiscals will have to come in uh, so that uh, there's an equitable distribution of funding to political parties to enable them to develop uh, the will of the people as it were and encourage more people into political uh, processes, um, develop research, um, and also run the administration of political parties. Mm. We do not want to see a situation where um, the vibrancy of our electoral system is undermined by the fact that there isn't enough uh, funding within the political system. Mm. But that has to be balanced with the constitutional impulse for transparency which is critical for an open society such as ourselves. All right. Simon Mabolo, the IEC's Chief Electoral Officer, thank you so much for your time.